Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jova Hexion and Pedro, Shirai and Teo Skiven of Squirmcoms here. Yeah, we, we couldn't have dweebs. The guy's been giving you the announcements involving copyright here with us. But he's off resting, doing whatever. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is a common problem and what may finally be the start to a solution of it. If you haven't guessed already, I'm a first re record referring to the... We are suing debacle going on. Uh, Pedro, care to give our fans the nitty gritty about it? All right. So basically, in, uh, the, the the YouTube channel Bible World, one of the biggest um, uh, channels, biggest uh, viewers of a religious films. Religious films. They also have a Quran reloaded thing. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Basically, it's a it's a show that uh, much like other. Uh, um, uh, other channels of the same type, like Armored Skeptic or The Amazing Atheist, uh, they do all this kind of thing for entertainment. And uh, the thing, and the thing is, it's all started a couple of months ago when they made a review of A Matter of Faith, which is a movie that we actually already commented upon, uh, uh, um, coincidentally. Yeah, and um, one of their better movies, surprisingly. And here's where things start. They did a review, and back then they got copyrighted. And this was before YouTube has gotten to the point where it's four strikes instead of free strikes. Uh, let's just say reviewers and commentators like us tend to have to deal with a lot of this copywriting BS. Only problem is the YouTube system is rather unfair to it's us, to put it lightly. It's incredibly easy for film companies to abuse them because YouTube doesn't usually try to even protect their their users by actually checking into things and that's what happened with the their matter of faith review even though their matter of faith review only uses a few clips here and there and and that falls into under fair use for those who are not um familiar with the fair use law it means you can use footage from a copyrighted work meaning movies games whatever it is and as long as you're not posting like an entire movie on youtube or anything like that as long as you're using footage in a limited quantity for the sake of review parody purposes uh, it's perfectly okay, and you can use that legally and even make money from it without the, the original copyright holder's uh, permission. The now, here's where things get trippy, though. It's like, well, it turns out that, well, this wasn't the only issue they had with it. They also had stuff like Crime of the Age, basically a lot of Christiana Brother and Pure Flix films. And while each one was taken care of, it kept coming back and back. Till it culminated to the point where it turns out the heads of the Christiana Brothers films, the Christiana Brothers themselves, weren't even the ones actually doing it. In fact, they were cordial through a set of emails. Pedro will link a video to that as well, I trust. Yes. Uh, basically, the, the okay, we have reasons to believe uh, that uh, the Christiana Brothers themselves are apparently not, pro probably not the ones actually doing the strikes themselves, or at least not giving the, the, the order to the strikes, because... Uh, the first time it happened with the Matter of Faith review, uh, Hugo managed to contact Dave Cristiano, one of the actual brothers themselves, through Google email, and uh, he explained fair use to him. Uh, apparently, Dave Cristiano wasn't even familiar with fair use. He explained it to him, and then Dave Cristiano gave the order from their um, DMCA guy to remove the strikes. The problem is that is when Hugo had to deal with that DMCA guy because the DMCA guy that works for the Christian Brothers, uh, let's just say he tried to you know scam his way out of this. Uh, to give you guys an idea, I'll link you a link to the actual conversation where they show it. But just to give you guys an idea, when he tried to please, okay, please remove the strikes, and then uh, and and then he kind of kept bouncing back and forth and kind of bullshitting Hugo. And eventually Hugo got tired and said, okay, could you show me a screenshot of the actual email you sent you to? Because what you've been seeing hasn't, hasn't been adding up. And he literally replied by saying, uh, literally a five word email saying, and I'm quoting, do not try my patience. Yes, I'm wanna, not kidding. <laughs> you want to know what's really, really, really funny? Is that this latest thing that has brought about this event, okay, the guy actually gave five DMC is because a lot of their videos that he had already <laughs> copyright stricken had already been repealed and, you know, disputed. So, the guy gave five DMCAs, and this is where it really gets magical. YouTube itself gave a message that pretty much said, okay, even we know these copyrights are BS, but well, yeah, and we will get rid of them soon. So, it's gotten to a point where YouTube, even YouTube's copyright system, mind you, actually recognized YouTube, how much BS it is. YouTube is. being competent. That, that, uh, uh, Teo, help me. Am I in Bizarro you know Land? You things are really bad <laughs> when YouTube itself is actually stepping oh, in and no, saying it, 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 
Oh, you think that's I mean, okay? We're see, here's still the in thing: the age of where's the fair use hashtag, and for, YouTube yeah, that is just actually came out very spot. recently. And for wow. the sake of context, to give you guys an idea, okay, the Matter of Faith review did have clips, but ever since the Matter of Faith controversy happened, they they even said to Dave and the pirate guy, the DMCA guy, uh, okay, for now on, whenever we review our movies, we're just going to use stills. We're not even going to use clips. Which of course, they didn't even have to do that because they they should be able to to use clips because you know fair yeah. use law, but they, they did it anyway. Very careful with the fact. Yeah, but they did it anyway uh, because just they didn't to want play safe, j maybe. just to play safe. And even then, they still got the MC, even though they were only using stills on their reviews. And here's and here's is where it gets hilarious, everybody. Uh, the uh, the five DMCA strikes that Joba just mentioned, three of them are from actual reviews they made. The other two are from videos of them just talking about the MCA stuff. There's not even any actual copy, not even stills. There's, there's copywriting little... people for talking about copyright. Yes, that <laughs> it's it's incredibly obvious that okay. Uh, allow me to bring uh, bring up what Jova said. Yes, it is. We have reasons to believe that Dave Cristiano and Rich Christian are probably not aware of what's going on, but this guy uh, is still working on behalf of their company. So and some... here's the real big problem when you think about it. The fact that an employee, just a mild-mannered employee within the ranks can abuse the copyright this bad. It's been said before, but yes, the copyright system is incredibly broken. And this just goes to show how it's even worse. Not only, oh, not only can a YouTuber's whole career be ruined by the click of a button and the typing of a few moronic words, but actually, sometimes the companies that are supposedly doing the copyright claims... They're not even really wanting to do it. It's just someone within there being pissy. So it kind of ruins the name of the of the company apparently making the copyright claim. Exactly. More than it already was, which is bad on both fronts. Which is why we're taking action now. See, it all comes down all to... Right, the, 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 oh, you go in Jake Carb. But yeah, mm -hmm. but basically everybody, what's happening is Hugo and Jake, as they said right here in their GoFundMe page, they have had enough. We are tired of filmmakers trying to silence dissenting voices, especially on YouTube, where fair use, free speech have fallen victim to the sensibilities of the offended. We, uh, so basically what's happening, guys, is Hugo and Jake are literally taking matters into their own hands and they're going and they're raising funds to pay uh, attorney uh, fees so they can sue the Cristiano Film Group. Allow me oh, to not just attorney fees, also state fees, location fees, yeah. possible traveling fees. They're actually really doing And this. even fees for an appeal if they have a biased by um, jury and judge. Exactly, because uh, let's, uh, because again, I'm, uh, I would like to bring up quick questions. I'm not saying that uh, every Christian judge or Christian jury uh, will be unbiased, but there is the possibility that they might find a judge who's not exactly the nicest person in the world. So oh, not just, just that. So just, in, so just in case they want to be able to appeal in case they need to. Hell, not just that, though. I mean, think about it. If it's a judge that's bought out easily, and yes, yeah, that too. Those are still a thing. I mean, you know, and honestly, when you think about it, if it, I'd almost dare say that a Christian judge and jury would actually rule in favor of Bible Reality because, well, okay, I won't say much about it. Let's just say the movies that those companies release are the kind of things that make a lot of Christians... Oh, yeah. Not but, like it. I mean, heck, you don't even have to take my word for it. <laughs> Literally, go anywhere on the internet. Even Catholic sites. No offense to Catholics, but even a Catholic uh, critic to actually give pretty context, much said that uh, God's not dead too was bad. To but also give context uh, to the, the matter itself uh, and to see that it's not just a thing of bots. Uh, there are, if you type in on YouTube easily, you can find reviews of the Cristiano Brothers movies yeah. that are positive, use these clips, and they, they they are not the MCA. Yes, basically. And the thing is, they're being when they're being reviewed by this channel and other channels, they're being reviewed not as products by Christians, but as movies. Yeah, the thing is, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So yeah, the fact that there are uh, positive reviews of the their movies out there on YouTube with clips and they're not being the MCA, it proves that this is an intentional attack to silence criticism. Uh, but it's not just them because, well, see, there's a reason all of YouTube's getting in on this. Because, uh, it goes beyond just that. It's, it's, you may a, it's an attack before, on but... our rights. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but it's also sometimes in a, a will to try and control us. For example, I'm Jova Hexian, and Joran Bexerin, You've probably seen one of my most popular videos, Sonic Boom, Ace Attorney Edition, which is incredibly popular. I have not tried to monetize it, mind you, and it's been just fine. 
until recently, and I'm actually not the only person who's had this, but apparently some unknown company called XMD Kids One is actually monetized my video and claiming copyright. Now, take a moment and type in XMD Kids One. What you'll get is a bunch of search results of people asking, uh, who the heck are XMD Kids One and do they even really own Sonic Boom stuff? No, and mind don't. you, or how making... do they even exist? Second, we oh. do do however you pronounce that company, I don't know the, the, the pronunciation of it. Mind you, they're making money off of my popular video that I spent hours making, and I didn't try to make a cent out of this. No, I I tried to dispute it, but as a YouTuber, I don't exactly have as much money as these people possibly. They might check it out, but if they actually take this to court, I have to pay for a lawyer. And I hate to say it, but... And I really, really hate to say this, but my YouTube account sadly isn't worth all of my money for something that could just be this one thing. And that's just one thing. Indeed. The point is, uh, this is something awesome that's happening. This is actually... Okay, the, the, the closest thing I remember happening was when the room review from the Nostalgia Critic was taken down by Tommy Wiseau, but uh, you, uh, Doug took it to court and eventually got his review back. The problem now is that that was back when Blip.TV was a thing. Blip.TV is, no, is no longer available, meaning YouTube is now the primary place for, for internet content creators to, you know, post videos. So basically, oh, 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 one moment on Bob Show's behalf. I should probably also mention that there is another you, uh, there is another video site that is not as big but growing. Zipcast. Mm, I'm I'm not familiar with it, so I can mention that. Zipcast is pretty much uh, the Discord to YouTube Skype. Something new and budding, not completely complete, but it's leagues better with the copyright stuff. Awesome. Anyway, uh, this is something really awesome because uh, Hugo and Jake are literally the f Rubble Roller is officially the first YouTube channel to take a stance against film companies who are false DMCAing people, which is which is bullying. It's uh, an attack on people's rights, an attack on freedom of speech, which is one of the most basic rights of U.S. law. Jova, please. And the uh, thing is, they think they can do it because they either hire, ha they either mm -hmm. have a lot of money. Or if they don't have much money, then they have a lot of power and a lot of say in things, and they use it to bully people, and they can't do that legally. They don't have that much money, Shira, because their movies have, know, are having an incredibly low budget. Yeah. They to give them a sense of a title. To, to put it into context, uh, uh, we're fighting for the First Amendment, which, as you may recall, was the subject matter of quite a few movies. Mm -hmm. To give another context, uh, another big YouTuber, you probably have heard, it. it's called Brad Jones, aka the cinema yeah. snob. Also had a problem with the Cristiano Brothers. However, he just decided to play safe because he didn't want to lose time and effort with the, the pirate jackets and just remove these videos. However, the Bible Reloaded guy, two guys are instead taking major action. The closest thing I remember to someone trying to do this was Jim Sterling saying that if he got attacked by uh, I forgot that video game company. One of the major ones he was having a dispute with, he would have taken them to court, but that went uh, pretty much anywhere, nowhere. Yeah. So, so yeah. But let's go back to the real source. Even without all this stuff, think back to the times of Cool Cat Saves the Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah, the, the cool cat thing is also, of course, well known. But for the sake of not drawing this out anymore, uh, uh, basically, the audience, the point is, Hugo and Jake are doing something really awesome for all of us YouTubers and uh, trying to make an example out of the Cristiano Brothers that they can't do this. They should not be allowed to do this. And uh, again, like, and yes, we understand that they're a small film company who that uh, that are not that big on money. But hey, they should have. Then this might, and if they lose, which they will, because you and Jake have the law on their side, um, this might cripple their ability to make more movies. Well, they should have thought about that before they broke the law several times. Again, we don't know before they. Yeah, they should have thought now that before breaking the law. Sorry. And One you're also thing probably I should say. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um. I can't remember the guy's name right now, but I can find the channel for you to put in the description or in an annotation on the video if you wish. But when the whole where's the fair use hashtag actually broke out, a lawyer who is actually um, very experienced with copyright law actually created a YouTube channel to sort of explain the legality of this. So if you want more information, I can find that channel so you can oh, have a look yourselves. Means. 
by all means. So yeah, everybody, what we're going to, so yeah, everybody, what I'm, basically what we're doing here, we're trying to basically spread the word. Uh, Hugo specifically said in his video that he doesn't even care if you want, go ahead and repost it, your, this video on your channel. I don't care if you're big or, or small. Uh, and already plenty of the channels on YouTube, big and small, are doing it. So of course, and as content creators that we are on YouTube as well, we figured we would do our part. Um, I personally, it may not I can, be much. Personally, but... person, I, I unfortunately cannot donate myself because GoFundMe.com doesn't accept PayPal. Also, but, the reason why I can't donate, but if yeah. this video helps, then that's good enough yeah, yeah, for yeah. us. If, after it, that. Yeah, that's why I'm the main reason why I wanted to to make this video. If I can get at least one person to donate five dollars, uh, that that this video is already a success in my eyes. So basically, everybody, what I'm asking it's you a small to do is, step. You're probably I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm not asking you to, I'm, I'm not asking you to company. donate. I'm not asking you to donate. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to consider donating. And if you think this is worth your t your money, by all means, please uh, give just uh, the minimum donation is five dollars. If 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 you want, if you can only donate five dollars, do it. Every little bit helps. At That's this point, one dollar will cut it. As of the time of this recording, well, actually, the minimum donation in this site is five dollars. You can't donate less than five. Uh, but the point is, right now they're halfway there. They're halfway through their goal, and um, so we're almost there. So only one, well, only just a bit more, and we sh and they should be able to get all the money they need. Also, so, to note that their um, page has only been up a couple of days, so that's quite an achievement already. Uh, for and, a day, actually. Yes, but um, even if... I thought it was two days by now. Well, that's even better. Well, almost, but, almost um, two days by now. But even if you aren't able to donate, like, spread this video, spread their video... Yeah, just post it on Twitter, something. post 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 the recap of yours, uh, uh, the, the, the original no, video on your channel. make your own video channel. if you want. Just yeah, like we're doing. Somehow. Just, the, yeah. just if you spread the word, if you can't donate, just spread the word. That, that in itself is a good help anyway, so... We're doing our part here because, again, we uh, we since we've also dealt with this kind of stuff on, uh, in the past with our channel, we we also um, uh, want this to be done. So thank you, thank you, you again, Jake. We wish you the best of luck. I think I speak for everybody when I say this. Yeah, uh, oh, please, please. Leave, I have something to say as well. For those of you thinking that even if they win this case, it's just you know one case against a small film company. Think about it. This could actually be our first step to showing companies in general that they can't boss us around. Yes. I mean, heck, for all we know, we were bullied by a small company, Roadshow Entertainment, who are technically a thing. But let's be honest, they only handle distribution. I'm, of course, referring to our infamous takedown of our Yokai Watch videos, which, mind you, were perfectly legal and okay in America and Europe. But because they were also coming to Australia and New Zealand... And no, we're not exactly aware of how to make things specifically available in certain countries. YouTube's copyright system usually does that for us. But yeah, because we were unaware, we were unfortunately stricken, and it took months of legal debate and talking via email. And it had to be carefully planned because we I don't think we really had the funds to go to court. Of course. But, yeah. So Anything basically, to help this actually make out a message against yes, companies will big set, and small. This will set a precedent because if this goes well, for now on, every time there's some, um, some there's a trial uh, in court involving copyrights, that lawyer, that defense attorney, would be able to pull this case and, and use that. Oh, th look at this. We, we, I love I, your honor. I would like to bring up the case of the Bible reloaded versus the Christian verse. You will set a precedent that people would be able to use as a way to protect fair use. This is something that we need to do. So, and as please, seen motive... from the from yep. the where's the fair use hashtag. I mean, YouTubers have finally, like, they've had enough for ages, but they've certainly had enough over the past few months, and they're basically all banning together now. And all right, so me and doing this. All right, so me and Joe have already talked yeah, about what we think about this. Uh, yeah. Teo, go ahead and um, if if you have any amount of uh, if, if you have anything about copyright uh, or any experience about it. On a personal level, but uh, I I have seen all over the internet. Uh, People having troubles, uh, people I followed, like, uh, uh, Shiro, you should know that too, Joe Scorcher also had a lot of troubles on its own. Yes, I do know that, unfortunately. Yeah. Poor guy. Um, but yeah, mainly the stuff I remember, yeah, I'm on YouTube, I've been on YouTube ever since like 2007 or something, so <laughs> I've seen YouTube passing through all of its ages and all its changes uh, and everything. Uh, I want to say, though, uh, 
it's not the first, like, it, this, thing, this thing about copyright is just as old as YouTube. Don't get me wrong. Like, people are starting to reacting only now, not because we're lazy, but because we have the means uh, to strike back. Um, yes. So, uh, that's a good thing. It, it may set a president, but, well, for all we know, may, maybe for in a couple of months, Trump will get elected and our freedom will go in the toilet. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but my point is, uh, uh, regardless of what the thematics uh, in, in themselves may be, try to support this guy because this may be a changing point uh, in the history of uh, reviews uh, and is, YouTube yeah. video, as you know, as you know it. Of them. Hell, not just YouTube. If any other websites have this problem, it could spread there too. All, All right, right. Yeah. So that, that's basically... maybe okay, soon sure. more video sites can be like Zipcast. But I'll talk more about that in another video. Sure, sure. Anything to add? Yeah, the the only personal experience I ever had with this kind of thing was one of the more ridiculous ones. It was getting a vlog um, <laughs> DMC'd. <laughs> And I didn't use oh. any pictures or clips or anything, like no music, nothing, zilch. It was just me, you know, yapping away and... Uh, How do you DMCA a vlog? <laughs> How does yeah. that even work? Well, it, well it actually, as you can imagine, it was both, incredibly um, easy to fight. <laughs> precedent that I yeah. want to remind everyone is the infamous one that happened in the winter of 2014, I think. It afflicted pretty much every major gaming-related video. Uh, not every every company was involved. Capcom was pretty much the first to apologize and removed all the takedowns. But basically, YouTube implemented a new bot automated system that uh, went haywire and started targeting every game major gaming video um, related video. The problem is Sega at the time was releasing one of its products called Shining Arc, I think, which was again a Japanese exclusive game. But in order to make publicity of it, of it started to basically do a bombardment at, at, in taking down every single video related to Shining Force, uh, very East, one of the historical franchise that was present on YouTube. Thankfully, the thing was resolved quickly, and nowadays, Shining Force videos are still available. But it was a precedent. And the videos were targeted were also videos where people actually still talked about Shining Force. Like the infamous one of Total Biscuit. He, he still has his rant, uh, if you want to see it. All right. Yeah. But, yeah, and that's, pretty cool. that's about and it. There's that's... nothing more about the Fine Brothers trying to actually copyright reaction uh, videos. Don't even, uh, don't even get me no, started on I, I that. Think, I think... Um, dragging their name through the mud has been done way too much by now. We'd just be beating it. Yeah, let's course. let's keep focus on Any the question. The, the yeah. So yeah, I've got a closing remark. If no one else has anything else to say, I do. Um, I'll, all right, everybody. What I want to, what I also want to like you to do is uh, go check the description video where I will put in all the videos that they that the Bible Reload has done chronicling this process and everything that happened in between. Go ahead and check the reviews as well. Why not? They're awesome and funny. So, um, so do, be, by all means, do that too. Uh, and I'll, the and, YouTube lawyer link, as well as also Bob Show's oh, video uh, talking about. Oh yes, Zipcast. I'll be sure to get that for you. Yeah, yeah, I'll sure. The Bob Show one as well. I'll put I'll put up I'll, I'll put up all the links in in the description so you guys can check the examples that we've been talking about. And of course, uh, I'll also leave the go the link to their GoFundMe page um, on the description. So please, if you have five dollars to spare or more. Please uh, cons uh, consider giving them a donation. It's you can be a part of something special that's going on. This is something that's awesome. Uh, so please, if you can, by all means, uh, donate just a bit. Everybody helps. So that was about it. Um, I will. We will leave you with the, the the actual video made by Hugo and Jake, so you guys can get uh, the actual details from the the men the men themselves. So see you then, and uh, please uh, Hold spread on, the word. Closing remark. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, before we go though, again, I'll leave you with this thought: anyone can fight back. I mean, heck, we actually fought off Roadshow Entertainment. It took us a few months, but. This is before we even broke 100 subscribers. Us, a small commentating channel, managed to actually fight off the strikes. Yes, unfortunately, our Yokai Watch commentaries will probably have to be visual-less because, well, dear lord, having to put up with that strike would be a bit too much of a delay, and, well, we don't want to have to put you guys through having to wait for actual full content again like last time. Exactly. But also, that's also more motivation to do this. If we can fight this... 
Maybe we can go back to actually having more of our commentaries having both the video and audio, like it was okay back in 2014, back when it was okay to even have Sonic X commentaries all the time, before they started getting taken down. Ah, uh, yes, I remember. Our very... Well, Jova, yeah, we forgot to mention the very first uh, takedown we had that made us... Uh... <laughs> Change into the channel. Uh, Pedro right. Shiro and Lips don't know actually, or, or do they? Not sure we oh do. We were already there when it happened, yes. God, how sure. many times have passed? Oh, well, I was actually in some of those Sonic X commentaries way Me back too. when, so yeah, I remember that. <laughs> All but right. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, the reason we have Squirm Swashbuckling Constable Regiment was because of old Constable Regiment getting taken down by BS copyrights. All they right, I think we've talked bad. about this long enough, yeah, so yeah. Go, go ahead and Jova close us out. Well, we're fighting back now. We're still fighting, so if you can, do whatever you can to help fight back. Let people know. Fund them. Check out the videos. Spread them. Share them. Make your own videos. Heck, do a collaboration here and there. Just let us know that you're also fighting the good fight, and we'll do what else we can to help. All right, everybody. All right. Rest is up to you. We'll leave you with their video. See you then. See ya. Hello, everyone. I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. And we have huge things happening right now. Uh, we are actually filing a lawsuit to uh, the Cristiano Films Group and 5 and 2 Pictures uh, because uh, in the past, obviously, you're aware if you're a fan of this show. If you're, if you're not, this is new information to you. They have DMCA'd us in the past. Yes. Uh, all the time, it's been false. Uh, we have beat them, I don't know how many times, two or three times at this point. And uh, we have had really, really bad interaction with them in the past. However, through a series of emails and long discussions and just uh, like three weeks of bullshit, uh, Hugo and I finally had broken out of the, their uh, last DMCA, which was on our review of Matter of Faith. Uh, and, and Hugo, you were the one that had the primary kind of talk with them. Why don't you tell us about that real quick? Basically what happened was we did a review of A Matter of Faith, and about a week or two later we got a DMCA notice. This is pretty common if you are a reviewer on YouTube, or anyone on YouTube, if you use any clips or even talk about anyone else's material at some point, chances are you've come across the DMCA. And what that is, is they send a legal notice to YouTube that tells them that copyrighted material is in the video and it needs to be taken down. Now. This is valid if you, for instance, uploaded a whole movie or large portions of a movie. However, there is part of copyright law called fair use. You've probably heard of this through various videos on YouTube, like people like Doug Walker have done the campaigns Where's the Fair Use, uh, in which for criticism or satire or comedy, stuff like that, as long as you're using the material in a limited way, you're allowed to use copyrighted material without the authorized consent of the copyright holder, as long as you use it properly. Now, we pride ourselves on, in our videos, especially talking about the Cristiano Brothers movies, we definitely fall in line under fair use. Normally this isn't a problem for us, it's usually an automated system, we bounce back a DMCA to the people who sent it via their bot, usually, and it gets taken care of. In the case of Five and Two Pictures, however, we actually got a real person, this person will go unnamed, but I had long, long conversations over the course of a few days with them of them trying to ignore me, but I continued to come back with the defense of fair use. However, uh, instead, they continued to be belligerent. I did, however, get in contact with Dave, who is the head of Five and Two Pictures, or the Cristiano Films Group, and uh, I explained fair use to him as well. Eventually, we came to an understanding, albeit begrudgingly, on the behalf of the person I talk to most of the time. Again, who will remain nameless, though we have come to call him the pirate guy for reasons we will maybe explain in the future. Anyway, so, basically, what happened was, months go by, maybe, it's been like two months at best, uh, and Hugo and I are sitting down to record one of our many videos, and... I get an email, uh, and it gets sent straight to my phone for the business email, and I read it uh, right before we're about to begin, and I start laughing. Like a lot. And Hugo is a little upset at me because we're supposed to be working. Uh, he's very professional uh, when the hot microphone is sitting in front of him. But, uh, so I read the email to him, and it turns out that YouTube sent me an email uh, letting us know that 5 and 2 Pictures Cristiano Film Group has sent five DMCA notices to our channel. However, in that in that email, even YouTube, yes, even YouTube, under their new system, said, hey, 
we're pretty sure you fall under fair use. We're just letting you know this happened. Yeah. So here's the thing. We have the list of all five of those DMCAs. The first three are movie reviews that we did. Hugo, tell the people what the movie reviews are. We did uh, Crime of the Age, which several which other people... Which is terrible. Have, yeah, several... Terrible. Several other people have also done that, including Brad Jones, the cinema snob. Uh, End of Harvest, which is another one starring also, the... Hey, also terrible. Yeah, Hey, Scotty Jesus Man Guy, and uh, Time Changer. Now, Very bad. all of these movies, we didn't use clips from the movies. Instead, we used stills. Now, why did we do right. this? Because in our discussions with Dave from 5 and 2 Pictures, he was actually a very nice guy. His employee was belligerent and very mean to us. However, Dave seemed like a nice guy who probably just had a bad employee. So, I agreed to Dave, and in fact, the employee in the future will just use still images. Because, whatever, if it makes you feel better. Although, legally, under fair use, we can use short clips. This was us being nice. Which apparently right. was a bad decision. This was us basically extending uh, an olive branch. We're, we're, we're trying to make amends because this is our job. This is their job. We kind of, we're all in a similar peer group um, in this media creation business. And we're just like, you know what? Fuck it. Your videos aren't that visually interesting anyways. We'll just, you know, we can review the movie with clips. It's fine. So we did that. So we got DMCA'd on all those. Uh, just, by the way, still images, and in uh, Crime of the Age, we used uh, some some audio, but not a lot. And that was because we needed to explain how poor the acting was. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so it was uh, for review purposes. Anyways, so the other two DMCAs, because remember, there are five, not three. In the other two, the pirate guy, the employee that represents the Cristiano Film Group... DMCA two videos in which we are discussing the prior DMCA. We used zero. You can't. It's DMCA exception. You cannot <laughs> DMCA someone. We didn't use any footage from anything in those. We weren't even really talking about the movies. We were talking about their terrible DMCA policies. Now, <laughs> here's what Pirate Guy was trying to do, and I don't know if his employers knew what he was doing or if he went lone wolf on this one. But at this point, it doesn't really matter because he was under their employ and he was acting on their behalf. Now, what I think happened was he was stewing for a couple of months, still mad at us, and mad at me in specific because I stopped him from doing what he does all the time. If you don't know, they have a reputation on YouTube for if you review any of their stuff negatively, they will DMCA you to take it down. Not just us. I have gotten dozens of messages on various social medias by much smaller YouTubers. We're talking a thousand subscribers, under a thousand, maybe like five thousand that did movie reviews of this, that got DMCA'd and their channels crippled because they don't have a big enough following to really make a lot of noise. Right. I assume I and Jake, by extension, were the first people to step in and say, hey, no, this isn't cool, we're big enough, we're not going to put up with your bullying. Now, they seemed very surprised that anyone stood up against them. The guy didn't even know how to undo the DMCA the first time around. Yeah, I had to... That's how few people get to fight him. Like, Brad, by the way, from, from uh, the Cinema Snob... He actually just took down the the video he had done of their movie and just capitulated and was just like, you know what, I'm out. And I don't blame him because that guy was fucking hard to deal with. Yeah. But Hugo, the little trooper that he is, pulled himself up by his bootstraps and kicked Pirate Guy right in the junk. Yeah. So I assume what happened was a couple months went by, we reviewed a couple more of their movies, as we said, in stills, those are the ones they recently DMCA'd. He probably got wind of this at some point in his searches over the internet, got mad because we were still criticizing them, and then attempted to find five videos he could maybe argue were DMCA-able. We've only done three of their movies since then, though. He couldn't redo A Matter of Faith because we've already gotten that removed. So he found three, and presumably he tried to find two others that were as close as possible to the criteria. <laughs> and what he found was us talking about him being a jerk with the DMCAs. Now, on these, by the way, you have to fill out the DMCA form saying what copyrighted material is in the video you want to take down and how much of it appears in. Here's a screenshot, by the way. These two videos, again, are the ones that have no copyrighted material. Not talking about the movies. The first one, they say, uh, the title of the original video was Second Glance, which is the Hey Scotty Jesus Man video. We've never done that movie. Never done ever. that movie. And it says, where does the content appear? Entire video. Implying that we just uploaded the video. Even though that video is, what, 10, maybe 20 minutes long? Something like that. Uh, and then the second one was <laughs> A Matter of Faith. 
That wasn't the Matter of Faith review, though. It was yet another one in which we were explaining the, the how wrong they are in their DMCA system is. Now, five DMCAs at once. If YouTube had accepted those, do you know where our, our channel would be right now? In the ether, gone. Yeah. Okay, so, and also, by the way, he knows that the DMCA values changed because it it is now four strikes on your channel, and then you're gone. It's no longer the two at, Three. at a time because YouTube had changed their uh, their system. So he went the extra mile and chose to DMCA us five times at once to try to silence us. This is obvious targeted abuse and harassment and i'm not kidding this falls under legal harassment and also perjury by the way filing a false dmca claim is federally recognized perjury that's not okay and you did that five times pirate guy so here's what's happening because of that we Got into contact with uh, FUPA, the Fair Use Protection account, which is uh, the, the account spearheaded by H3H3 Productions here on YouTube. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that, uh, Ethan, and uh, in, in their fight against copyright, which is still ongoing. Uh, from there, we actually got a hold of one of the two main lawyers for that. Now, we're not going directly through FUPA at this time because they're just swamped, but we are going through Michael Lee, who was one of the two main lawyers for that account. And he, so we got on a hangout with him after Hugo had emailed him back and forth a little bit. And we're like, hey, what do we do? He looked at the case and goes, oh, buddy, you, you're you going to jump all over this. This is ridiculous. And he literally said, this is the worst abuse he's ever seen as far as DMCA is concerned. The worst that he has seen. And he deals with this all the time. And then he said, we can't do it through FUPA right now. But what we can do is we can set up a, uh, a fundraiser for you and I'll give you numbers and I'll give you an estimate and and we'll, wor we'll work it out. And here are the numbers he got. It's $5,000 to start. Uh, this gets us a lawyer on retainer and then they can begin the process of getting the suit served, negotiations and other preliminary things we need uh, to, to get the case going. Basically all the paperwork and the legal mumbo jumbo. Um, we need this as soon as possible. This is the number one priority right now. Uh, the second one is about $50,000, which I know sounds like a lot, but this is halfway. Uh, this is the halfway point for roughly anything we could possibly need as this case progresses, uh, especially because copyright cases like this are actually more complicated than they seem. They're not like, um, you know, like a drug case where there's a guaranteed sentence for any sort of thing that falls under... Uh, a specific law. Uh, these are all subjective, so they actually have to really get talked through. Uh, we will need this for the obvious stuff like lawyer fees, and uh, we'll need this for the obvious stuff like lawyer fees and legal expenses, but also travel costs for the attorneys and possibly ourselves. If there's a deposition or there's a settlement hearing, we need to be there for that. Uh, so we'll need to be able to fly around the country. Um, and we actually don't have a state locked down yet in where this trial is going to be. And this is all stuff that this would pay for, by the way. Uh, and then, of course, depending on how the case plays out, uh, he recommended strongly that we aim for $100,000. Uh, and he said this should, uh, unless for some reason this went to the Supreme Court, um, in which case we would need more, that this should cover every possible expense uh, or probable expense, including appeals, uh, more lawyer fees, of course, more travel, and other legal expenses. And if every one of our fans donated one dollar, every one of our subscribers, we would hit this immediately. Yeah. We would, we would hit it immediately. Now, uh, this is our GoFundMe. And uh, this is serious stuff. Uh, this is uh, our fight for fair use. And as of right now, uh, we've only, I basically, it just, we tweeted it out right when we made it. Right now, uh, 45 people, it's only been 45 people. Remember, there are 133,000 of you. 45 people have raised $900 already. We are almost, uh, almost 20% on the way to our first goal, which is 5,000, just to get the retainer, to get the lawyers moving on this. That's amazing. Yeah. The support already is crazy. Uh, honestly, if you can donate $1 to this, or, uh, or whatever you can, honestly, this will help so much. It's not just an us thing, uh, because if it was just an us thing, we might just, uh, seek a settlement. 
Uh, we might just go to them and be like, hey, uh, without the lawyers and shit, look, this is bullshit. Uh, not gonna, not gonna deal with it personally for us. However, the 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 fact that we've gotten so many emails and tweets and texts and and comments about this specific company abusing the DMCA on YouTube for creators is just too much. We're taking their asses to court and we're going to kick the shit out of them. Yeah. Honestly, not physically. This might get First of all, <laughs> can I just say this video, if you have a YouTube yeah. channel or know someone that does, no matter how big or small, I give you full permission. Rip this video, put it there with a the with a link to the GoFundMe because I don't care. I want Absolutely. this message spread because this isn't about us. This is about setting precedent and showing companies you can't stop criticism by breaking the law. You can hate us. I get it. We're a controversial type channel and we're douchebags. That's fine. <laughs> but sometimes you need a douchebag to do something nice people won't. So I would like, exactly. if you don't agree with us, that's totally fine. Send us a dollar and say we're assholes and downvote every review we've ever done. That's not the point. The point is showing companies that online, when you're working within the law, they can be criticized. Okay? It's this as simple is, as that. This is it just is. This is not only about DMCA and fair use. This is about freedom of speech. You've seen this uh, go on all year this year and a little bit last year. People trying to police thought or police words you can say. You've seen the new uh, terms of service for uh, YouTube uh, and how loose they are with things like hate speech. This is the kind of shit we're fighting against right now. And this is why we need you. We can't do this alone. Uh, we don't make nearly enough money to fund this. But with you, we can be the fucking people that get this done. Yeah. We can be one of them. H3H3 is going to be uh, doing theirs uh, and, and setting precedent where they are. And we're going to do it again specifically on behalf of non-religious people right now. Because this is obvious Christian people trying to, to make us have less of a voice. Yeah. I mean, they just don't like what we're saying right now. Have you noticed, and, by the like, way, there are positive reviews of their movie out there using clips? That are not DMCA'd. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's really what it is, man. And this isn't the only company that's done this, done this to us, but this is the only company that's done this to us after they lost and then did it even worse. Yeah. So. We give everyone two strikes. This is strike two. This is the end. We're going all the way for it. Uh, Cristiano Film Group and uh, Five and Two Pictures. Uh, this, is, this is going to court. So, uh... Please, anything that you can uh, offer us, even if it's just a retweet and a share, but uh, if you can afford $1, I would appreciate it yeah. because uh, not only we need it, it's everyone. Everyone that makes videos on YouTube and has anything just slightly off color to say. This is, this is you. This could be you, but we're trying to... We have enough people to make this work. Yes. So... I guess that's it. I guess we have a lot of work to do. Thank you, everyone. It's going to be probably a rough couple months, if not longer, depending. I'm pretty confident yeah. we're going to win. I'm not worried about it. But that doesn't mean they're mm -hmm. not going to try and hurt us in the process. So I hope you're there to support right. us. We'll and, try and, and update you as we can. Though, obviously, in matters like this, you can't just go spouting off about everything. We'll let you know right. what we know when we can reasonably, if that makes sense. So Yeah. And, and that said, uh, don't think that this is a slam dunk. Consider this. This is such a subjective topic that uh, if we got a Christian judge and a Christian-leaning jury, we wouldn't win the case, and we'd have to appeal it and move off court. Meaning that we need all the money we can get in preparation for this because we're a minority here in this situation. I don't think this will get Supreme Court because no. it's pretty ridiculous that they don't have nearly the case that they would need to get there. But this could get appealed at least once. I, I could totally foresee that happening. And uh, if that happens, uh, it's it's going to be a really long ride. So uh, please come take that ride with us. Yeah. Because uh, we're gonna fucking we're gonna we're gonna do this. So, thanks everyone. Again, share this, rip this, put it on your channel. Let other bigger channels know what's going on if they depend on fair use. Because even if they don't like us, that's fine. Maybe they'd understand that this is important to everyone on YouTube. But anyway, until next time, I'm Hugo, and I'm Jake, and this is where the fair use is, motherfucker.